What's going on, Mad Yak? How are you? I, I read yesterday that you uh, had had a little had a, had quite a day. How are you? I'm feeling pretty rough, but I'm alive and surprised. Really, it's kind of like Final Destination. So, oh, what happened? Yeah. So the the front tire on a semi, like a, a boom truck, like it's a crane on the truck, it it exploded, and I really don't remember too much after that. Um, you were in the, truck. yeah, we were on the turnpike, um, going as fast as I could, which was like 68. And so we oh, hit the wow. center. There's a concrete barrier and I guess the crane boom broke loose and started swinging around. And my boss was actually behind us, um, watching it all go, watching it all happen. And when I come to, he was trying to get me out and I was covered in blood and, Oh my god! Yeah, it was it was crazy. I was like, I was pretty freaked out, um, but I, I got a cut on my head about two and a half inches, like seven staples, and a little sore. No one got hurt, so that's good. No one really got hurt. This is yeah, I'm very glad. Okay. I mean, it's funny because like Dub, Dub was saying you had a rough day, and then you were saying yeah, it was like Final Destination, like because of like millennials and even millennials, like. The way people talk about like Final Destination and stuff, I thought it was gonna be like, oh, like a pretty trivial thing, but an annoying thing happened, and it really was like Final Destination. That's the fault of millennials. You can never know. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's wild. It's like with yelling. It's wild. Um, yeah, I'm just glad to be here today. Actually, you sound so oh, yeah. chill for this type of situation too. Like you're you're really very composed. I mean, this is I guess after the fact. I'm very like shook by this this is insane yeah i was shook i was shook for the f all day it happened um the day before yesterday so yeah i'm just sore today and um yeah like i said glad to be here glad to be so alive the truck crashed and, essentially. and do you feel like like driving this kind of truck again or oh yeah i will for sure um no problem no problem, but uh, okay. it, it was just a freak accident. The tires were good. Um, just stuff happens, I guess. You Let were briefly question, famous, is that right? Yeah. You, were on the t you were on TV? Yeah, I was on the news. Well, the wreck was. I wasn't. Yeah, the wreck, it was on the news. There were helicopters. We shut down the entire turnpike for like three hours. And uh, yeah, it was pretty wild. I think the boom swung over the truck into oncoming traffic, and of course, it was up in the air. Everyone was going underneath it. Thankfully, there wasn't any semis right then. It was wild. And so you you were uh, conscious for the tire getting messed up. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure if that stunned me a little bit, or we. I think we pretty much instantly like the wheel of the truck dug in and, and slammed us into the concrete wall. And then my head shattered the window, the glass in the door. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what knocked me out, but I was out at one time for, for a bit. And you only came to, if I'm using that correctly, when it was all over, basically. I like think so. Still... Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, my boss was uh, oh, yeah, trying to get you me out. out of there. Yeah. Cause there was what? diesel going everywhere and, who knows? It could have been way worse. Yeah, yeah, I, th yeah, you th <laughs> I think it could have been way worse. Jesus. So let me ask this question. To Piv's point, uh, it seems like maybe a design flaw where if it gets a flat tire, it like can kill you. Is that normal? I guess it's a truck. Yeah, it's a truck. And th these tires, like they're big, like extra fat on the front to, to allow it to drive better off-road maybe. And uh, they uh, just, they're not like regular tires. And I don't like them. Now, there was still a lot of tread, like three eighths of an inch of tread, uh, which is a lot um, still. And like they were all good and I, just a freak, freak accident. Wow. 
But yeah, I always wear my seatbelt, so that's all right. Th th thankfully, and my the person riding with me, he had his seatbelt on too, and sometimes he doesn't wear his seatbelt, and that might have been real bad. That's I. Hopefully, he does now. Yeah, um, yeah. It was just you in the car. Yeah, it was just me and my coworker, and then my boss was following us. Wow, that's uh, really makes you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you were literally involved in it, <laughs> but even for me, it wasn't really makes you kind of think about like, woof, you know, uh, finalist nation, never, never leaving the house. I'm definitely not watching that movie ever now after hearing this. Right, right. Ever will I watch it? But uh, to quick poll, Dove and 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 and, and Piv, have you seen it? Well, there's like twelve of them. Um, That's a good question. I think I've seen one. Which one? One of them. I, I don't remember. It was when I was a, a, a kid. It terrified me. All right, fair enough. Piv, are you, are you familiar with the Final Destination meme? No, not at all. Basically, the concept, I've never seen it. The concept is like, you know, you uh, uh, avoid something that should have killed you in terms of fate, and then now the world becomes programmed against you so that, like, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, and it tries to, like, kill you. Basically. Is that the plot of Final Destination? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what happens at the end? No one, no one uh, knows. But the idea is some kind of freak accident like this, like just totally getting insane escalation. You know, I think is is touched on by the yeah uh, by the you thing, know. But last winter, so a year ago, I moved back to Michigan um, for the first time, like as an adult, and I'd driven for you know five years at that point, but I. I was living in the Carolinas. I was living in California. So I'd never driven in snow before. And last winter I had to drive in snow in Michigan for the first time. And I got into three separate car accidents. Oh, geez. And after that winter, I just, I like, I don't like driving anymore. Like driving is, is, uh, you know, whatever. When stuff like that happens, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's, you know. it's dangerous, but, it's not as dangerous for normal cars, I think, but still. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and driving on ice especially is very scary. So it can be bad. I'm in a cold weather climate myself driving, so we're going to see this winter. So, well, yeah, this is a good, I mean, this is good. This is good. I think I, I feel, you know, this is, this is um, uh, that sounds terrible, Mad Yak, but I, I really appreciate you sharing it because I feel like, um I kind of feel somewhat of a cathartic thing uh, uh, as well here. Um, but yeah, that sounds just really horrible, but thank you for sharing it. It's really, it's really good to, good to hear, you know, about, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. Whew. Well, on to the main topic, on to the main topic. We got a packed house here. Welcome to the capsule 21 podcast. If you remember last week, you heard an amazing episode with Burke Ozdemir and this week, you are going to hear an episode about the making of that episode. And I don't mean about the making in terms of the approach that we had to choosing the guest or figuring out the best way to interview him or how we prepped our interpersonal dynamic to achieve a good result. I'm saying the making of in terms of the very, very literal making of, i.e. the transferring of the already recorded interview uh, into the podcast CMS and publishing it and eventually uh, tweeting about it. And so Anyone who has a interview that they've already um, recorded with this gentleman, Burke, will be able to, 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 to put these steps to immediate use. My name is Tom Lehman, Middlemarch, and it's the Cats 21 podcast, a podcast about art, technology, culture, and now today officially about podcasting as well. My co-hosts are Dovetail and Piv. And we are Capsule 21, which is an art collective dedicated to the celebration of timeless art through blockchain technologies. Welcome everyone and uh congrats we are now in the uh meta podcasting phase of podcasting so we are going to be able to finally have an episode uh, about the art the art of the pod what do you think this is our seinfeld you know uh you know podcast episode about nothing and we already did that we <laughs> did that. <laughs> We literally had episode about this is, no. This is good because I don't uh, I don't make the podcast. I just I just show up, so I'm eager to learn how it's done. Hell yeah! 
So background, by way of background, I don't really have like a huge uh, background in, actually you have like a background in audio, don't you, Piv? You should be doing this. In, in audio, no, no. I did uh, some montage for a movie. So I, I think that's a bit the same too. Yeah, it sounds like audio to me. I, I think it's a bit the same, yes. Yeah, so what's the deal? I mean, you know, one thing I will say about audio and this is something I learned from someone, but I always say it. And, you know, in my old job, I was the co-founder and CEO of a company called Genius. Genius.com is a music website that also puts out video content and uh, tells you, like, the meaning of, of song lyrics and, and this kind of thing, the stories behind the songs. We did a lot of video, and so I actually had to be in the context of a, you know, video, not like a video editor or whatever, a director, but I, you know, hired and, you know, managed that sort of thing. And what I would always say is audio is the most important thing. You can watch a video and the quality of the video can be grainy and it can be black and white. It can be a total disaster. If the audio quality is good, it can be chill. Whereas the audio quality is bad, no matter how good the video is, it is absolutely unwatchable. And so this is why typically on podcasts, they have like a, you know, expensive microphone setups basically, which is not exactly what we do here. Or at least I don't. Dub always sounds good, but that's the, that's the importance of audio. Yeah. So let's get into it. So the way I like to do this is I use a platform called Anchor. I feel like someone, um, oh my God, I just logged into Anchor and uh, this is amazing. So this is a live thing, by the way, everyone, if you're listening to this right now, none of this was, was scripted. I logged into Anchor and uh, it said, you created eight, 189 minutes of content in 2022, I guess, through this podcast. And uh, the rap has arrived. This is amazing. You've got a rap to this thing. It says it's more than 94% of creators in this category. Now, is that a kind of a neg? Like what category? Like the, you know, bottom tier NFT podcast or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Okay, can you find uh, the category? I do... Uh... I know I'm now I'm looking well, there, for, this is really insane. There aren't many NFT podcasts. I mean, you'd think that there's a lot, but most, most podcasts in this space are, are crypto. Um, and we don't, uh, I mean, I mean, crypto always comes up, but we're, we are not uh, a crypto podcast. I, I can only think of two or three other NFT specific uh, shows. Well, I'll tell you this, I went even broader. I now have been informed that we are in the arts category. Okay. Oh, great. wow. Cool. So, uh, that's pretty good. 94% better than all arts. Um, you know, we don't have to look at this live. Uh, okay, but it's really, I want to hear like about the engagements. Okay, there's no, oh my God, this is amazing. Okay, we're playing, we're doing an ep ep episode. Okay. One episode really grabbed your listeners' attention. Can you guess your number one? And the uh, choices are the future of on-chain art is dot, 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 off-chain, question mark, exclamation point. That's one. Two is the final episode. And three is kickstart your career with podcasting, which was our number one episode. What do you all think? Our... I think number three, kickstart your career. Which one had Michael Hirsch on it? None of these things did. So, oh, sorry, well, Hirsch. You, you, I'm going to say number two. Okay, well, I will break the, uh, I'll break the tie because I hope it's the career thing. Because if it's the first episode, that's the most depressing thing I've ever heard. These are all in September, by the way. Oh, Kickstart is wrong. Oh, final episode is wrong. It's the on chain, <laughs> off chain thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we it's good. Are no, such that's good nerds. People like the clickbait title. Right now, this room is empty because we don't have a clickbait title. It sounds, it sounds, you know, who wants to learn how to do a podcast? But it's not even that. It's how to publish a very specific thing that you right. already did. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but this is this is not. This has nothing to do. This has nothing to do with. Um, spaces though this is all about the future of on-chain art had 139 percent more streams than the average episode 
pretty impressive. Okay. Uh, the next section, your podcast loves to travel. Where is this one going? I wonder. Uh, it says it was heard in four countries. Your top three was United States, Israel, and the United Kingdom. Israel, nice. Just tell me the fourth. This was a key rule in user experience, I found. When you have a list of things and there's a dot, 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 you never want to click for more to show you the same number of things that it's something that takes up the same amount of space as the words click for more. It should always show you one more than that. Okay, here's a, a little pop quiz for y'all. Something magical happened between September 11th and September 17th. What was it? I, I don't know. You had 56% more listeners compared to your average week. How many how many views do these podcasts get? I mean, our, what let's let's establish our authority on, on pod, podcast publishing. Yeah, well, well, uh, you know, uh, intelligently, uh, the, the the Spotify things are all with like percentages, so they're trying not to really nail it down. But I'll say I'll say on this pod, this is the official meta pod. Your listeners' podcast personality is. The adventurer, your listeners venture, quote unquote, venture out into the unknown, searching for fresher podcasts and gems yet to be found. Is this, uh, yeah, I, this I, accurate? I'm just saying people who only listen to small podcasts. I guess they, they are pretty adventurous, venturesome. Uh, all right, we're on six of seven, and then we'll get to the uh, very interesting thing. Thank you for sharing your podcast with the world. Okay, that was six. Let's go to seven. It's so slow. And seven is basically just saying, speaking of sharing, we made something for you. Okay, if you're listening to this on the pod, like just, you know, you, oh, eight episodes. Uh, okay. Okay, this is pretty sweet. How can I get this to? Um, how can I get this to you guys? Um, it's like a square thing. Oh, I guess I'll put it in in in, in chat. Um, I'll do the, the. There are a lot of good ones here. Okay, I, I, this is this is a. Um, I'll deal with this later. Okay. Nine hundred minutes, and here we are. No one in the audience. Can we keep it up for a whole another year, or, or do we wrap wrap it up? We we got our wrapped. Yeah, let's. This is the last. This is the final episode. No, that's <laughs> we're not. This is not the final. Come on. I just keep recommending things that we've already done. So, I mean, the the audience size is terrible. If you just look at this, uh, our all time plays is one hundred and ninety two. I, I personally, I feel that that's impressive. Ah, yeah, me too. 192 oh. people have have gone on a on a different platform than Twitter and sat down mm -hmm. and listened to this. That's incredible. It's not, it's, not, it's not 192 people. It's 192 plays. No, no, but but still, still 100. That's that's a lot. That's a, that's a lot of listens. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, uh, here. Here's a one. What is the average number of um, plays an episode gets? I mean, I guess that's pretty easy to figure out if you know how many episodes we have, but 11. And then how many people played an episode of your podcast in the last seven days? Dead air. Uh, Eight people. Eight. Yeah, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. I again, I feel like that is a lot. Like you, you rem remember that this is a you know, like this is a Twitter space that we we happen to put somewhere else. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm impressed with the fact that anyone is clicking on it outside of a you know a, a Twitter space um, context. 
What's in my bio? You, you really have to go out of your way to listen to it anywhere else. You have to go out of your way to listen to it here. But at least Twitter is kind of conducive. I mean, we can retweet a link to it and say, hey, come listen. But, you know, people are more interested in the live thing than the, than the off live thing. I'm, I'm, impre- I'm impressed by it. I guess people are used to sort of narrative podcasts where, you know, the, it's, you know there's like a radio show aspect to podcasting that exists and you know where it's like their interviews it's like edited together heavily cur- directed thing and you know we have like a little bit more of a loose style but yeah so next year we go for 16 i think it's very important to podcast but okay so now on to the on to the sort of main event here <laughs> for but, everyone but yes but but what is the difference because because we had quite a lot of people at some point oh you're saying it went down a lot yes is it really yes. the title you think no, so? I, I think we've lost some novelty like there's novelty yeah. like, wow th- these guys are doing a a podcast like that's crazy like let, let's hear what they have to say and then eventually you know the, the novelty factor of like the founder of genius.com and, and piv the punk artist and dovetail the guy you know does whatever you know the the novelty of it i think wears but, but what is also um if you have like a a, an, uh, a popular person people follow them i think if poli comes in and you see it on top you can see it on top who's in I think a lot of people follow it too. Yes. Yeah. When when we had Burke in here, there was a lot of people I've never seen before with the the Gan Punk PFP. Yeah. And when Michael Hirsch was on here, we had a lot of a lot of indelible labs heads. Yeah. But we we also had the mentalist a couple of times who has a big following. So that helps too, I think, if you have yeah, I mean, we know we like to guess. I mean, we just did the the episode right before this one, wink, wink, right? Because we're releasing it in this. You know, got a huge amount of views, you know, and that's because we had an amazing guest. And so we know the guest thing works. This episode now, I mean, it's merely summarizing some of the technical details of one aspect of the administrative process of uploading an audio file. So, of course... Yeah, I, I can't believe no one is interested in that. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's really not the same thing. But, yeah, I think the guests are good. It'd be nice if there were a way to have people listen to the podcast and get the guests because, you know, they're, like, legit episodes. Like, that's the problem. Like, okay, one of my big stories... Hey, we got our dude. Joel, what's up, dude? So, one of the big issues... Uh, that, you know, it's like when an actual, when we do an actual good podcast, like the one we're releasing uh, today, but that the people listening has already heard, you know, you want to kind of do a special tweet that says, no, 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 trust us, this one's actually good. It includes a real guest, and we talk about real things, and we looked at the thing beforehand, we thought about the right things, and we know about it, and we talked to this person, it's good. And then there are other episodes which are more like, they're good if you already you know like us you know and are you know i, yeah. I, I don't know yeah. Yeah, it's true so the question is if you are not equipped to do something that's quote unquote actually good do you do nothing at all and my philosophy on this kind of thing is definitely you just always keep doing stuff like you never ever stop and this was actually a thing you wrote piv about the caps 21 thing about how you know, if you look at like the time capsules of the, you know, Andy Warhol guy, they like had a bunch of garbage mm-hmm. in them. Like you probably shouldn't worry too much about this stuff. And really, this is the purest version of that in a sense, because this is really, you know, at least with the NFTs that we put out that no one buys, they, um, you know, eventually someone might buy them and they buy and they give them money. That actually happens a decent amount of time. But this, we don't even make money from it, even if someone likes <laughs> it. So whew, this is the ultimate Andy Warhol trash thing. And so my future employers are going to be listening to this. They're going to be thinking, wow, like eight people. Why did he, you know, I don't know. We shouldn't have divulged these proprietary pieces of information. But yeah, I think it's good to do things. Yeah. Yeah, this is the content uh, mantra is that you don't have to do uh, good things all the time. You just have to do things all the time. And 
because whatever you never know what's gonna what people are gonna like or dislike you just have to keep keep doing it also plus like i really think that this could make this episode here could actually be an amazing episode because it could be the moment that we're talking about it and then like later on i'm gonna be able to we're gonna tell people people like oh my god blah 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 we're gonna be like listen here's the absolute guaranteed secret to podcasting success put out a podcast every week for a year and if you do that you are guaranteed to be successful but most people 99 percent of people can't actually do it they can't make it that far and i'm going to say that with extreme confidence and if they say what i'm going to say go back to this episode when we were on eight people because doesn't that feel like advice that you would want to give someone if you achieve success <laughs> yeah first we have to a do it for a year and b in in a year be more successful and then we can we can say that but yeah, yeah I, I like that i mean when it comes to uh ceramics that's what i tell people i'm um, as i often like to point out a very accomplished potter and what i like to tell people is if you make a thousand pots you are definitely going to be good at ceramics like there's no possible way there's never been ever a person ever who has made a thousand pots that is not good at ceramics ever now, there are probably people, there are podcasts that have uh, been out every week for a year that aren't famous, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I listen to podcasts that have been on for a year and aren't that popular or, or, or maybe aren't really that good. Um, but they have their little cult followings. You know, that's uh, you can always say that. OK, so we could get our cult thing. I, I, I didn't say a, a cult. <laughs> thing i said thing yeah 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 it's good to have like um you know i just want you know i want a subreddit about this podcast you know oh wow wow that's ambitious <laughs> you <laughs> yeah you need i need okay we do it every thursday but i need people discussing it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Precisely. Are, are you familiar with this podcast called The Red Scare? Yes, I, I am a, a Zoomer, yes. Okay, you're a Zoomer. Yes, 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 yes. So I don't listen to it because I refuse to listen to like just shoot the bleep podcasts, even though that's what this is. I hate that vibe. But my wife really likes it. And sometimes when there's a really good part about it, she paraphrases it to me, which is the most I'm down for for any like shooting the S podcast. I want paraphrasing only. And it's sometimes pretty good. And then she says, oh, this is about the Reddit thing. And it's like, wow, they got like a pretty good subreddit. So, you know, yeah, that's goals, right? Yeah, I, I, I yeah. I mean, it's, I, ha having fans is a double-edged story. Ooh, there's there's something point. weird about that. Do you listen to the to the Red Scare? I I don't. No, I don't. Pib, do you know about the Red Scare? <laughs> no, sorry, I don't know. You should look this up. This is a meme of of that's worth knowing about. I think in terms of like New York stuff. So, I don't know. What do you think, Dev? How would you characterize it? Yeah, I think calling it that, uh, like a New York thing, it's probably accurate. I'm not a big I'm not a big podcast uh, a listener. I listen to. Uh, do I want to say? What, no, I don't want to say what I listen to. But yeah, Red Red Scare is worth uh, knowing about as just like a cultural touchstone. It has. Well, anyway, it's they have a subreddit, but yeah, I, I think that's a podcast. It's a meme that we would be want to be, uh, you know, on that level. I guess we need a Patreon, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Priority number one is get the Patreon sorted out. I just feel like you can't, people can't give you money if there's no, you know, mint button. I guess, I guess no, we don't do Patreon. We sell the rug radio thing. I actually have a rug radio membership pass. You, why, what, can I ask you why you have one? <laughs> because <laughs> I uh, was, uh, you know, it was my early days in crypto or whatever this is, NFT land, and everyone was buying them, and gas was super high, and I said, oh my god, I'm, I must have one. This is a huge meme. I'm going to make a lot of money. Yeah, I think they're just money laundering tokens. Wait, but I'm not money laundering. I wish I was money laundering. I mean, not that, but like, I wish <laughs> yeah. I had something to leave for me. Yeah, well, they have to, they have to sell them to regular people 
too, so that you know when Farouk, uh, you know, is paid for one by his guests, then it just kind of blends into all the other normal transactions. Ah, right, right. So it's a way of uh, it's a way of getting paid. Yeah, Paris without... Hilton didn't. Paris Hilton didn't pay him fifteen hundred dollars to be on his rug radio podcast Perez Hilton sorry not Perez Paris Hilton simply bought a rug radio NFT from him wow he didn't he didn't get paid for that he sold something wow that's amazing well was it sold at market price I, I believe so yeah so then, <laughs> then it's probably fine I guess I don't know perhaps perhaps yeah we should That's start. Uh, <laughs> if you want to come on the Capsule Twenty One podcast, you you have to buy my Cyberfunks from me <laughs> at market price. If you're doing it above market yeah, price, yeah. then you uh, you know well that's that's part of that is something else, I guess. But yeah, I think uh, I think that the access token is good. Um, I mean, wouldn't you want access to this? Uh, to this room, but yeah, I think okay. So here's the plan, as I see it: we do a straight year podcast every week for a year. We try to have good guests, and we and that's basically that's basically uh, that's basically it. And we continue to you know pump the the brand and, and the, the pop up. The pop up is is a good idea, I think. Oh, for for attending a space, you mean? Yes. It's just so hard to do the POAP thing. I don't even know who the POAP people are. Are POAPs worth anything? Do people like collecting those? We're going to give them away? I think they do. It's always puzzled me. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, I still got to get the Burke POAP, actually. You know, but that was my first experience with it. But yeah, you know. Oh, you, you have it? <laughs> you have it, yes? The Burke POAP? I have not gotten it yet, no. But you've mentioned it to me. Okay. And it's on my mind, but it's like steps that you have to take and everything. And so it's like, yeah, but I think, you know, what you're gesturing at PIV is incentivizing the, uh, the audience, basically, uh, creating a gamification aspect that goes beyond just passive, putting out content for passive. Yeah. yeah. How many, you have to, you, you earn cap coins. For every, every minute really of the sure. podcast, that so you much do, work. You earn, uh, you earn a cap coin oh my on our proprietary God. software podcast listening um, tool that tracks your listening activity and uses an eye monitor to make sure you're actually paying attention. And then you earn cap coins, which you can use to exchange for uh, <laughs> cyberpunks and uh, Marylands, which then you can sell on the open market. And that's a system that I think is really going to incentivize our listeners. Wow. Wow. And does Anchor give you this ability? <laughs> yeah. And this, is, this is why Anchor is going to get left in the dust by, by <laughs> our, new, our new software program. It's really... Um, oof. Podcast came tough. All right, let's well, okay. get into the how, main topic. I have, I have a question for the main topic. How did you? How did? How did Burke come to be on Capsule Twenty One? How did that happen? Because I just kind of watched not it. Not part of the main topic, but I think it's good, Paulie. What's yeah, up? It's Go not ahead, part Biff. of the publishing. Who is Burke? What are? Why, what are we talking about here today? By the way, do you know that Burke hasn't done an, uh, a tour in the museum yet? I'm shocked. In so in Soft's, Soft's museum. Oh, it's his own museum. The Soft Punk Museum. So Burke is now in the Soft Punk Museum, but he, but he hasn't. Been. He hasn't. He hasn't toured it. No, no, there hasn't been a tour yet. All right, who's who's Burke? We got it. We're, we're just, starting. I the invited part. Burke. I invited him. Oh, Burke. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Burke was on our last uh, on our last podcast app, and. Uh, yeah, I don't, have we even talked about what this pod, what, what <laughs> the title of this is? How to publish a Burke podcast? Though? Okay, we have the episode. Way there. It's recorded. The interview is recorded. We are going to be live. I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to take this interview, how to edit it, 
and how to publish it on the Anchor platform. So everyone knows uh, how to do it. And it's kind of a podcast, you know, it's, it's being jokey because it's like pretending to be very specific to this one type of interview, but it could work for any of you. It's like how to make a podcast with Anchor. And then also, you know, this Burke episode was great. And so we can kind of like do a bit of a recap because the people listening to this have already listened to that. And so, um, so let's start there. Let, now we're getting some people coming in. Who is this Burke guy, Piv? Because Piv architected this. You know, I did a lot of the talking, but like Piv architected this guy, Burke. Who is this guy? And why should people click follow on him right now from the uh, title of the spaces? Burke is the creator of the big gun punks or the bastard, bastard gun punks. Um, it was an AI experiment and it's from 2020. So he was one of the first to do some, something with the punks, I think. And we had a talk with him last week. And I think it was interesting from the beginning till the end. Uh, actually, everything he said was interesting. That's amazing. And how, and how did, did we get him? Because he, he was in the, he is now in the SoftBank Museum. Um, and he really, he really changed the entire museum the appearance of the entire museum. It doesn't look at all like the standard museum anymore. Yeah, so Burke is really okay. a, you know, I guess, how is it different? What is the Soap Punk Museum? So on cyber.io slash punk. And basically, you can go in this virtual world and see this guy's, uh, Burke's art, uh, but he has placed the NFTs, animated NFTs, on the floor and on the ceiling, so it, it kind of transforms the... You hear about it in the interview. You know, I, I actually like the way on Cyber looks. It kind of looks like, you know, urbane and clean or whatever, but uh, it actually is not that cool, and so he made it uh, a lot, like, cooler feeling. And the Bastard Gan punks are, you know, part of the... You know, key aesthetic of Burke, but there's so much that he has got going on in the museum. So you should check it out. You should listen to our interview. But now, what do you do if you have an interview? How do you publish it? So we are on the anchor.fm platform. And I hey, recommend. Tom, Tom, did you just say that Burke is a woman? No, guy. Okay. I was like, what the fuck? I thought you just said it was a woman and it threw me off like crazy. My bad. We did a whole interview with it. I assure you. I should, but this is this podcast is. is um, the recap, quasi recap. But yeah, no, Burke, Burke is amazing. Although I got confused by the the princess camel thing when I when I was I was looking into Burke. Yes, yes, it it confused me too. And and another thing that that was confusing. Um, so I I saw the the guy was was born. He lives now in Istanbul, but he's born in the Netherlands, and he he lived there like for twenty years. So I started chatting with him in, in Dutch. And then he replied, oh, sorry, I don't speak Dutch. So he's, he, he, speaks... he identified it as Dutch, though. I, I think so. He lived there for 20 years, but <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't speak Dutch. So he's, he's Turkish. So that was a bit weird, but... That's interesting. Well, I'm not even sure I could identify. And... He he also he also went to to like a university in the Netherlands. So yeah, interesting. What what languages do you speak, Piv? Actually, now that we're on this topic, briefly, because I know you had a couple uh, Dutch, French, and English. Oh, it's not that amazing. much. Amazing, especially the French one. That's my that's my dream. Dub, do you speak any any languages? Uh, I am bilingual, and I also speak uh, Korean. Oh, right. This Korean was your job. English. Yeah. I remember this, of course. You learn so bilingual in addition to Korean. You know, I speak English and Korean. Yeah. Right. So got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Where did Very you get cool. the Where did you get the French from, Piv? Sorry. Where did you learn to speak French? Are you from France? No, I'm I'm Belgian. Oh my, that's cool. My uncle lives in Brussels. My dad is French. Okay, okay. So we are Belgium, 
Belgium is bilingual. bilingual. Je ne pas. Do you have to speak French there? Yeah, they speak French. We have two parts. Yes, yes, yes. French and, and Dutch. Wow. Same. That's amazing. Yeah, it's always been my dream to know to know French. But that's kind of like the podcasting thing. If I really, you know, I really started to like go Fran. You know, I'm, I'm a French friend, and I don't see him that much because of like all whatever stuff. But like I used to go to France in 2016, started going a decent amount, and then I would always be thinking like, ah, it's too late for me to really try to learn. But if I had really tried, you know, if I put out my French podcast once a week since 2016. I would be uh, I would be a lot better. So you know, Dove, that's a lesson to you. As yeah, you uh, you can level. you should try to learn French. I I would. This is totally unrelated, but worth saying. When I was eighteen and I was going to language school to learn Korean, one of my classmates was in his late thirties. He's like an older uh, guy. He's like twenty years older than me, and. Um, you know, I, I thought that language learning was something you could really only do when you were younger. And then as you got older, like maybe you could learn enough to, to be to like get directions and do do basic stuff. But this guy, his name was Barry. Um, he was the best Korean speaker in our class. And he was just this older white guy. He's like a Mormon. He like, you know, it was kind of sheltered, but he, he became the best Korean speaker out of, out of all of us. Yeah, so, what other languages did he speak though? He, none, none, he, none. He he really? spoke English. He he did his Mormon his mission. Um, I forget where he did it, but it, it was in an English speaking country. I think it might have been like New Zealand or something like that. Um, so yeah, he he was just like a fucking you know white white bread, uh, you know American dude, and he he crushed it. He he was incredible at language learning. I, I think it's just because he studied harder because he. <laughs> like he was older, he had like a better work ethic. When I was eighteen I got, and learning I a language, probably, I, I got a question. I want to do that. I have a question for you guys. If if we were to make the blockchain analogy, would BTC be Latin, and what would be Ethereum? Well, like what's the Solana of languages? Belgian is the Solana of languages because it doesn't even exist or work. <laughs> Belgian doesn't exist no as a language. It's 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 vaporware. <laughs> I well, they're uh, <laughs> yeah, at, what, yeah. Question, Esperanto yeah. What is, is vaporware. I mean, I don't know. Any, yeah, uh, I mean, I think Bitcoin because it's like you know doesn't you can't do the smart contracts thing. So maybe Bitcoin is kind of like the um, the uh, older the pre language maybe, and then um, you know just like with solidity, like every EVM compatible blockchain, you know everything that uses solidity is kind of the same thing and so maybe like you know i guess solana is evm compatible i guess you probably should know that's so maybe ethereum and solana are the same language but ethereum is like when you you know carve it into you know the the finest marble and solana is you know like when you um you know uh uh just write it on a scrap you know it's not yeah. that permanent <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah so disgusting. it's an andy warhol time capsule you know a piece of little scrap paper yeah, but it's it's a good it's a good question. It's a good, what about this? Do you recognize that? No, no. The jingle. Yeah, yeah, very good. You heard it. You liked it. I'll do it one more time. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me you've never heard that. That is our That's podcast fucking me up. music. Have you ever listened to an episode up. of this podcast that you're on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm doing it now. I don't need to. I don't. <laughs> That's really funny. I've just been. I've been this trolled. Is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm being trolled live. Every episode starts with that. I picked it out, by the way. I, there was there's some options, but I picked that one out. I thought it'd be. I cool. think it's cool. I think that's a good pick. Yeah. Pib, I thought think? it was from Tom. I thought it was oh, from the Nickelodeon show, My Brother and Me. That's funny. I've never seen that episode show. That's a good one. You got to You got to check that out. 
I'm going to look for the theme song. Are we, it's like the, uh, I don't know. It's just like that vibe. It's like 90s, kind of like, kind of like a little hip hop play. Let's hear it. This is a little dated, but. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear it. I, I, hear I it. love I hear that it. Casio keyboard. Yes. And that's really good. <laughs> and, um, and then this one you definitely have not heard. Uh, definitely. But I'm going to play it anyway, if you haven't heard that one. And you can tell me what you think about this. That's good. Yeah, good, that, yeah. That's good. Is that, is, that, is that a harp? What, are the, what am I, Spanish guitar? What am I... <laughs> No idea. That is our outro music. Who has yeah, heard very, that? It's so serene. It's like I'm in a David Lynch. It's like I'm in an episode of Twin Peaks. I'm being played out. To yeah, I figure you strings. listen to the whole episode and you're kind of like, oh, geez, that was I'm so keyed up right now. I need a <laughs> cigarette or yeah. something. So yeah. we, uh, we chill you out with that one. So, you know, I went through a bunch of different options. Anchor, for everyone out there who wants to learn how to do a podcast, Anchor is very cool. You can... Um, you can just choose one of these things. They got beats. They got a bunch, actually. It took me quite a bit of time. They got calm. They got beats. And then at the very end, they have um, whimsical. So, uh, you know, if you know me, you know that I can, you know, be on the whimsical side. And so uh, that's where I went to find the outro music. That is a whimsical song you just heard. I don't know if I would call that whimsical. I think that's a category error. What about this? That's actually sick. That that's fire. fire. That's that fire. Gives me, uh, that gives me K-drama vibes. Dovetail. The way that it works with royalty-free music is that they the categorization is a little bit looser. So, like, that in, in royalty-free standards is whimsical, but in normal standards, it's not whimsical. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah I get it. And, All right. I yeah, just they have, to, they have to be loose with it. They have to for video pop. editors. Now we have play, two. Play we're that again. Play, play the last one again. That was dang. Ooh. You know, th- this reminds me, um, the composer Brian Eno, uh, very famous. He, he did the Windows 95 startup noise, and it's like three seconds. And, and when he was making it, Microsoft commissioned him to do it. They gave him like all these adjectives. And they were like, it needs to be serene. It needs to be inspiring. It needs to be energetic. It needs to be thoughtful. It needs to be da 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 And then at the very end, they were like, oh, and it needs to be three seconds long. So Brian Eno's you know, like, how the fuck do I fit all of these things in three seconds? But he, he did it. I think he did it. I think he nailed it. Short like, music is, is strong. can be powerful. I made a remix of that song. Yo, that's that's I gotta hear that. It's old, but I'll find it somewhere. I made it like twenty years ago. Well, there's not for that. There's the uh, 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 there. Does anyone know that things don't fall from Brianino? Sorry, anyone that things don't fall, don't talk from Brianino. That's an amazing song. Dead Finks don't talk. Okay, here we go. This is royalty free, right? I think this song. I find. Okay, we're losing people. Uh, I think we're going to get DMCA'd if we... If yeah, we sorry. We're, that's 22 <laughs> seconds. That's, that's the minutes. Back to the royalty-free stuff. So, okay. So, on to, I added a bunch of these more things now. But the real key of this is the, uh, the audio. And so, the question is the interview. So, I like to open up the interview. And uh, you can edit it. And I've already uploaded the audio file because I um, didn't want to have the whole thing be so long. So, basically, you go in there and you can kind of like play it. And you can see... If there's even a moment of dead air, someone chime in. Uh, the algorithm does not like dead air. Okay. So that's me explaining the dead air thing. And I don't like it either, for that matter. So there's a truck <laughs> backing up. <laughs> it's about how the entire world. Yes, yes. Okay. And I asked them, so that's how we... All right, I got to find the place. So now I'm like trying to find the, the place to start the episode, basically. And this is a, something with podcasts. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Like, 
One theory is it starts with my opening where I say welcome. Another theory is that people like to listen to some like talky talk thing first as like a cold open. Uh, what, 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 what podcast episode technique do you like the best? I like when there's stuff happening before, but then I feel like I'm part of the, I'm, I'm like part of it. I'm not just an audience member. I'm like a, I'm on the team. Right. I hate it, but I, I don't really listen. <laughs> I'm like professional done thing. So where can I find it here? This might be a little bit tough to do in real time to play like a bunch of choppy excerpts. Asked about art. Oh, here we go. Which is after this talk, but everyone in here, if you want to beat me. Uh, to it. And also, by the way, I'm officially considering it a pope for listening to this podcast. So I will track the ID and then you will get credit for my, it won't be visible anywhere, but I, I will, uh, I will write it down. So that we pope for this podcast too. So please check out, uh, it's on cyber.io slash so punk. I'm pumping the museum, museum again here. It's probably the best exhibition uh, in it right now in terms of playing with the form. So welcome to the Capsule 21 podcast. Okay. So that's me getting to the welcome thing. Should I cut out that part or... Uh... Or leave it. Or go back further. Uh, I like that. Yeah, because if you start at the welcome, you know, you're going to have a hard time cutting it to sound uh, uh, natural. That's actually, by the way, something. And this is another podcast uh, tip for anyone out there. If you ever want to do something, you really got to pause first. Like if you were saying, like, welcome, you don't just say, okay, let's uh, let's start the episode now. And welcome to the thing. Because the... The, you're, you're breathing in, you're welcome, you know, you're, you're not gonna be able to cut that. You have to really pause for like three seconds of dead air, which I understand kills you in the algorithm, and then say uh, welcome. So don't ever, you know, just try to do something thinking you can cut it. I still mess that up, but I think that's like a really important uh, and counterintuitive thing uh, for me. Wow, the Pope. The Pope. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So we have the opener out of the way. Thank Ooh. you, Pip. We have the opener out of the way. From their gallery. You know, it's about how the entire world were interviewed. I, I, how did you get Burke on the show? I think I heard your quick. Okay, so this is me cutting to the point where Piv explains how he got Burke on the show. So maybe I'll start there. We're interviewed. I, I, how did you get Burke on the show? I think I heard your question, which was, how did we get such an amazing guest? Okay, so let's, I'm going to, and now I split yeah. it. You split Good. it. And then you basically you say, this? what do you got, Kristen? We're interviewing I, I, you. How did you get Burke on the show? I think I heard your... Okay, I'm going to put it back here. And then we're going to delete this uh, part. Uh, and we're going to play. This is where it starts. Kristen, we're interviewing I, I, you. How did you get Burke on the show? I think I heard your question, which was... Is that a fine way to start? Or is that too much, too jumpy? Oh, get I, think it's, I think it's too abrupt. I, I think... You know, because we do this uh, via a, a Twitter space first and then and then second, it, it becomes a podcast. I think that if we try to dress it up too much, like it doesn't it doesn't work right because the, the, the context for how we're how we're speaking and how everything happens is so is so loose. I don't think you can uh, I don't think you can dress it up too much. It's like trying to put uh, put lipstick on a pig, so to speak. Well, that's not the Maybe. right way to say You're it. next. It's not like the thing is bad. No, 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 no. But I, it's a, the, the format is very loose, just in the way that we speak to one another. You know, we have audio quality that is defined by uh, the bit rate given to us by by Twitter. Um, you know, it's a, it's a casual it's a casual thing. All right, so I open it there. I open it there, and now it's processing the edit. And then we got to basically just write a description, which I don't. It's tough to write this stuff live. I feel bad with everyone. Listening, I'm not going to clack, clack, clack on my keyboard, but it was fun to play the um, the audio sounds. Uh, here's another beat. Maybe this one's more our style. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the idea of opening with like a crazy like dubstep drop, and then it's like 30 to 45 minutes of <laughs> like explaining a tech. Uh, like an intricate tech thing. Well, now I want like 10 of these in a row. Like we could have this one in there. That's not bad. Yeah, I think I would love, you know, for, for NFT NYC, we should do a live taping, in-person taping of a Capsule 21 podcast. And I think that there should be someone performing uh, music 
throughout the whole thing. We should have, you know, jazz at a very low volume while we, <laughs> while we're talking. That would be cool, like conceptual art, just a podcast of, you know, the thing that's just just all of these songs, you know, one by one, uh, even the nostalgic ones. <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of jingles. But yeah, these are all sick. Okay, so I'm doing, for this episode, just because uh, you guys are not even listening to the pod, I'm doing two intro jingles and two outro jingles. So this is going to give the people what they that's, want. That's groundbreaking. I, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> I think that's very cool, actually. I'm, I'm very into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it's the intro to the other intro, and then the pod starts. So you know we're we're processing the uh, the edit. This is an hour and sixteen minute podcast, and um, and it's gonna be sweet. Basically, like I just have to write the intro. I have to do this Photoshop on the freaking in image. I have to Photoshop every single image. You guys, the art guys, and I just duplicate the image in Photoshop and do it. I have to write the intro, and then I gotta copy the tweet copy for my old thing. And put it out. I'm like, it's just putting out content, you know? Like, I really feel like I'm a, uh, a content guy, you know, with these podcasts. Like, I... I, I yeah, uh, I feel that, yeah. It's content. Content is interesting. Um, there, there's someone who's, whose name I don't want to say today because they got into a lot of... Uh, they said something very horrible today. Celebrity who, who in, a, in a song said, said five beats a day for three summers. And I feel like I'm in my five beats a day for three summers era especially with the, the you know and i think this podcast is the same thing where it's just like content creation for the sake of creating like every day i'm just like doing and posting something and it's not always that good um it's not yeah. always that no, interesting. no no this podcast being every week for all next year is the illustration of that you right, have to right, you right. use that for your own work this is the only this this is this is this should satisfy all of your needs of uh the beats per day thing <laughs> no, you no, can get it through your own work. You can do it's it all your own combined. Work it's all combined. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. Doing doing a doing a, a Twitter Spaces to, to to four people and, and one audience member. I, you know, that's that's five beats a day for three summers. That's the that's the whole thing. Yeah, but not really because as Piv has pointed out, we've had more. So it's like it's like as if a successful person went back to the other no players. no 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 because any any time that you as a content creator doing anything you're gonna have times where you are more popular you're gonna have times where you are more successful and then you go down if it the, you know this is the kobe podcast up only you can't go up only you have to go down Ooh. and then you then you can go back up but yeah. you can't you can't just increase exponentially the the viewer count the listener count you it's can't so true there is no such thing as up only nothing has ever gone up only that's so messed up yeah it's like like it'll be fucking cool in a year when you were like oh yeah you weren't you you just became a fan uh mad yak was the only person in the audience a year ago so <laughs> shout out to mad yak shout out to ashton kutcher espresso and soupy so what are you guys working on? Let's get let's get back to Capsule Twenty One. You know this is this is the um, you know the original podcast thing. Uh, you know it's like funny because the the intro I'm basically saying this is Capsule Twenty One, a podcast about art, and we're like talking about what are we even talking about? But we talked about a lot of art last week. Okay, if anyone tries to hate, I would just say listen to the podcast episode you just heard, which was the Burke one. But art, what what's the art? Uh, what's the art deal? Dub, you're painting the noise, but then Piv, you go Piv. I I, I know more about Dub than I know about you. Um, not so much new things, I think, but uh, I've been thinking to, to, to take a new look at, uh, Excel punks and what, work a bit on... yes, you're going <laughs> to drop not... this on me right now, like here and now, no, but I, I'm not thinking about redoing them, but have a look at them and yeah, I don't know yet, but I, I want to look back at the uh, Excel punks. Oh, Excel punks, for those who don't know, are a masterpiece, a flawed and doomed masterpiece because they're on the open sea thing and we've talked about that kind of thing, but very, very beautiful. The original inspiration for Yunks and Cyberfunks, the first ever color shift funk punk thing on a transparent grid. What about making physicals of that, Piv? Like Dove made a physical. He's making physicals now even. You should sell... You know, like, did you paint, Piv? 
Um, I, I draw, yes. Some kind of format where you could sell this. Someone actually was on Twitter saying for 5,000 bucks, I'm selling like real life pixel pipe of the punks or whatever, like real life things. Like I think that could be a, um, a pretty interesting, what about the physicality of stuff? Like, or maybe having it fabricated in some way and physically make it. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't found anything uh, yet to make a, to make a link, a physical link between the, the things I do here. I really would love to, because um, I have nothing right now. I have, and thank God for Dove. You know, he's the only guy. I have my own thing, which is a giant ten thousand fashion hat punk thing. When I put out the fashion hat punks, I thought, okay, first of all, these are going to sell out instantly. And second of all, this is like the best thing I'll ever do. So I did the, you know, $500 printout thing and put them huge on my wall. And now they're on my wall, my office. I didn't want to look at them. I'm just like, oh, this is from so long ago. And they haven't seen <laughs> Why do I have this? But I'm not going to go then and say, okay, well, I like the cyberpunks more or whatever. Because, you know, once you put one 10K thing on your wall. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. They look cool. It's very abstract at this distance. They're so small. So I don't know. And, and how, how big is it on the print? How big is the print? It is, uh, I think it's like uh, four feet by four feet. So, uh, sorry, Piv, I, I really, let me, look, let me look that. Four feet in meters. It's like 1.22 meters squared. How does that sound? So it's basically, uh, you know, one point two two. Okay, so it's 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 one, you know, it's sixteen. Uh, you know, it's one point two two. Let's start with that uh, squared. So that's one point five meters squared, uh, and then divided by ten uh, k. Uh, so that's, you know, why don't we say sixteen uh, feet? So why don't we say Okay, so it's really okay. So forty-eight times forty-eight, so it's it's two thousand inches by here. So it's really like uh, a quarter of an inch uh, by a quarter of an inch is how big a punk is. So sorry again with the centimeters thing, but that's how big the punk is. About a quarter inch on each side. So pretty small. It's not bad though. It's pretty big. Yeah, it was fun to get this printed out. It was expensive. Yeah, and physical then, uh, physical work is really cool. I um I think I mentioned in an earlier podcast I found these uh. You know, there's a company called On a Whim that makes these really nice digital displays for, um, or sorry, physical displays for digital art. Um, they like connect to your wallet and stuff, so you can display your NFTs in your in your home, or in a in a gallery or wherever. They're very nice. I think it costs like uh, 0.3 ETH or 0.5 ETH to buy one, so they're they're expensive, but they're they're really really quality things. But yeah, bridging bridging to physical. I'm very interested in doing. I think it's just cool to show people your art in person. Um, doing digital art is is cool, but I don't know. There's something about like the the physical, uh, you know, uh, the conversation that you have someone with someone in person and like showing it to someone in person and then kind of feel it and get a sense for it in a in a different way. Digital art, it's kind of hard to it's hard to get that. I think I think mainly because it's hard to get people's attention online. But and you were person, saying your thing is digital, the screen. It's a screen. Yeah, but it's but it's um it's like real. Like it's like you can see it. it it's like a, a thing you can look at. Uh, you know, it's different than a phone or a laptop screen because it uh, just by context of what it is as an object forces you to stop and and look at it. On your phone, like the the hardest thing with digital art in my experience my very limited experience as an artist is that it's very hard to capture people's attention online. But in person, if someone's looking at it, you have their attention already. And then you, you can talk about it and, and have a connection to them or to it. Um, but in person, it's really hard to get that moment. It's hard to get, it's hard to get somebody's two seconds to, to talk to them or make them think. Yeah, it's so insane. I mean, my friend, I was at his house. He had a digital photo 
uh, frame on the wall and it was cycling through all of his digital photos. And when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is the corniest, boomeriest, am I using that right? Boomeriest, like this is so stupid. And then by the end of, I was visiting him, by the end of the trip, I was just like glued to it. Like I was watching every single transition, every single fucking thing. And it's super effective because you're just sitting somewhere, you know, you're, you're trying to not be on your phone. So yeah, I think that would be very cool. Like what is the right, I guess the things you were talking about were really expensive. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, 500 bucks, 600 bucks. It's not, it's not prohibitively expensive, but it's up there for sure. Yeah. I gotta get something, but I want something from you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm working on this painting right now. I think I'll probably keep this one, but I, I so far I've enjoyed, I've, I'm on day five with it. I've worked on it for, for 10 hours now. And, um, I'm about halfway done. I like making it. I think I'm going to make more once I'm finished. Yeah, you got to sell it. And what about you, Pib? When can I buy something that you, uh, some physical thing that you've made? I understand that's not what you're working on necessarily even right now. I'll, I'll try to think of something. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I think it should be an Excel Punk thing. Like, I, I really think, you know, because the Excel Punks at the Sove Gallery were so impressive. You know what I mean? Because of the transparency, which maybe doesn't translate, but you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I would like to see you combine your current work with your architecture background. I think that that would be very neat. Yeah, we got to get into the Sove Gallery. I mean, that's like the most reductive possible way to view that, but it just pumped in my head. Like, not the Sove Gallery, our gallery. We have a gallery. Or it could be something yeah. else. But... Yes, and I, I have a couple of ideas to, to, to change the gallery, but it's, yeah, it's quite a lot of work also. Ugh. <laughs> Again. Again, how's everyone out there doing? We've been uh, yakking up here. Yak himself is gone, so there's been ebbs and flows on that on that front. Anyone out there want to share any podcasting tips or have any advice on um, you know what to do to make the most money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a money podcast. They put let's, us in the arts category. This is a let's money be podcast. honest. I mean, oh yeah, the artist never. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is real talk, y'all. This is the arts category, and this is what it's really like. This is the real side of the arts category. I, I can. I can't co-sign. <laughs> How do we make more money? No, it doesn't have to be about money. Okay, it's just like I'm just trying to like get the people going. What do we? Um, Today what I should we make. Money. Today I had to pay rent for the first time in New York City. Oh that wow, was, that was fun. You got it. It's hard to evict someone. That's a meme. You should wait till the last. No, you you're good to pay it on time. You, you, you... <laughs> that, that's the advice I'm being given: is that you shouldn't have paid rent. <laughs> should, but the, yeah, it's good to pay rent. But do, do you um, have to do a thing that is like the boomer style, where you deliver like cash somewhere? Like that sometimes happens. No, thank God. No, no. Today was today was stressful all morning because you know, when I moved in, the realtor told me that she was going to email me all the information that I needed for this apartment. And, um, so I, the whole month I've been living under that assumption that I would be emailed info. And when I moved in, the super of the building was gone. So someone else like gave me a key. So I've been living in this apartment with like no information at all like all month. Like, I don't even know. I don't even have my super's phone number. I don't have my landlord's phone number. I don't have any info. Today rolls around. I'm like, oh shit, I have to pay rent today. And I don't even know how to pay rent. So I spent all morning running around and like asking my neighbors, like trying to call random numbers that are posted on the building. Couldn't figure it out, but anyway, I figured it out now. And so what, how did you do it? I emailed every every email address related to my leasing process. No, I'm saying literally, how did you do it? Like, how did you upload it or whatever? Like, oh, I, I, basis it's, here? It's, uh, it's online. I just, you know, linked up my bank account. I, I was thankful I didn't have to do it the old school way because their office is in fucking Manhattan. 
That's crazy. Now I'm I've sounding like a real New Yorker. Thing. Now I'm I'm really getting the new <laughs> the New York spirit. The quintessential New York experience. I, you should read this. Uh, so I hate, as a rule, I hate fiction. Do you know why that is? No. I do not find it strange enough. Uh, reality is stranger than fiction. <laughs> yes, it's a joke. Yeah. True, it's, truth is true. Reality is it's, it's stranger. Um, but I was reading this really good book of short stories, and I almost finished. It was actually an audio book, and I got fed up with it right like 10 minutes before it ended, which is not something that happens with uh, physical books. You, If you're one page away, you don't stop, but that's the problem with audio books. But it is a uh, – uh, it is a uh, – book called i'm looking it up right now it's a book called some trick by uh helen uh helen dewitt who wrote a book called uh, the last samurai which i'm told is very good but i have not read and this is a book of short stories and i think it is really cute and i really think you all should read this uh or not read it really just like read two um two stories in it uh let me pull up the table of contents uh these are real recommendations okay the real deal so one which is the uh, inspiration for this episode kind of uh which is about the the obsession with burke and everything the the short story is called climbers okay you can google it it's in harper's if you go incognito uh you can do that you can find it. And um, the other thing, which is for you, uh, Dove, is called um, – where is this? It's, a, it's basically a book about um, – I'm going to look it up on my freaking thing. Uh, God, this is why people prepare for podcasts. But you, this is all going to be your oh, – you're, you're, I'm going to be the one laughing very soon. Very, very soon. Uh, Okay, it's called um, You should ask Open GPT. It's like Google, but better. That's like having quintessential New York experience. Sorry. I said you should ask the AI. Oh, like a oh yeah, deal. let's try. Uh, let's try. Okay. Uh, they apparently they're they're you know having too many people or whatever. Uh, you know, at one point I had ac- exclusive access to this owing to like my Sam Altman like inside track Y Combinator like you know the now not uh, anymore. So I'm going to say uh, as opening. Okay, what are the best Helen DeWitt short stories okay let's see oh wow uh oh my goodness it says as a language model trained by open ai i don't have the ability to read or evaluate the quality of short stories how did it know that uh. <laughs> that's amazing it knows that language models can't uh I'm going to say one of the most celebrated yes. short. Also, I, I really realize... much. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Have you ever read a short story by uh, Bernard Malamut? Um, no, definitely not. No, it's quite nice. It's also in, in New York. He has, uh, he has good uh, short stories, well, but it's what's already the from the. Bernard Malamut. M A R L. Oh, an American novelist. M- yeah. Oh, wow. The, the styles of the book covers are very interesting. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, oh, he wrote The Natural. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think the. The short stories are are his best work. So what book? Mm. 
What should I look at? And is there an audiobook? He's got the magic barrel. That's the one that's linked on Wikipedia. So Wikipedia, there are three statuses. There's red link, which basically means like, yeah, maybe there should be a link here someday. There is uh, black, which means no link. And then there's blue, which means actual link. So of his short story collections, the magic barrel, 1958, is the only one that's blue. Yeah. I think I need the magic barrel. Is it? All right, maybe I'll check this out. I'll get it on it's audio. Good. It's in italics because it's a short story collection. If we're an individual short story, it would be how represented. Pop quiz, MLA. <laughs> I, I haven't been in school in six years. I, I don't remember. <laughs> You're an artist, bro. You got to know this stuff. It's uh, quotes for short stories. Okay. Uh, I see him. So you want to know the trick with that that I was taught once? The whole thing is in italics, and the part of the thing is in quotes. So like an album title is italics, but a song name is quotes. And when you can't do italics, you do all caps. I don't know about that. It's true, <laughs> but that's why film Twitter always does movie titles in all caps. I don't know about that. I think often it's, it's what you true. Say. It's true when you can't when you can't do italics or bold. You, you, my my brother is a, a professional journalist and and a member of uh, film Twitter. I have it. On, I have it on good authority. Yeah. Well. Okay. What about freaking uh, book title Twitter or album title Twitter? When you're talking about an album on Twitter, does does, does, does every reviewer put it in all caps? They use a single quote typically. I think. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But that's interesting. It's a good question. It's a very difficult question, actually, when it comes in. You know, Genius obviously dealt with these kinds of topics uh, as well. And um, I was always a uh, big proponent of the so-called smart or curly quote that is a curly quote. And uh, the uh, head of content at that time, chief content officer, Brendan, was always said, it does not matter, Tom, if it's a curly or a straight quote. And he was right. <laughs> I wish I had not been so obsessed with that kind of stuff. So with that said, what else? This is it. We are, we did it. We didn't actually publish the episode because um, I figured it'd be too much click clacking, but I will publish that episode. And if you're listening to this podcast, you've already heard it. So, you know, I published it. You know, I'm a man of my word. Everyone else will have to wait. Parting thoughts. Who's got any parting thoughts? Otherwise... This thing is done. This is if you're one listening, episode. You know, go ahead. If you're listening and you are a musician or you know a musician and they need album art, I would really like to do album art and I will do it for free. You can look on my Twitter and see my, my work. That's my pitch. I really, my, my goal is to be on Spotify as someone who did an, an album art. Well, do the art of this podcast, you maniac. Jesus. It's different. It's different to do a podcast art. It's not different at all. There's no difference. Okay, there's some differences. That's fair. Uh, that's very fair. Um, okay. Piv? Yeah, no, no, uh, no thoughts anymore. Oh, yeah. All right, we did it. Good job, everyone. If you're listening to this, you made it. You're next. A song a day for five years. That's what we're going to be doing here. And it starts next year. But this is the pre... If you're listening to this and it's at the end of 2023 and you're hearing us talk about doing a podcast a day throughout all 2024, you will know we are very serious about it. And we've actually recorded almost a thousand minutes already. So if you are interested, you can um, take some time and listen to that or at least the intro music. The episode you're listening to now... We'll have more than one intro music uh, track as the last ones. I hope my uh, co-hosts listen to the intro music in Spotify once or twice as well. It's royalty free, so please go nuts. Thank you all for joining us. Caps 21 podcast every week, 5 p.m. Thursday. Live Twitter spaces. No one joined this time, but if you want to be on stage and further your career within a podcast appearance, this is one of the rare podcasts where you can do it. So please get involved. Join the cast 20 on chat. Hit up Dovetail and enjoy your weekend. Bye, everyone. Boom.